Let's take a look at a really neat shuffle bowler. This is a 1950 Gottlieb Bolette shuffle bowling machine. And it's different from uh, just about any other shuffle bowler because it's a smaller size. Gottlieb purposely designed this to be about the size of a pinball so it could fit into the slot of a pinball machine. So perhaps operators might uh, use it uh, more than the larger, very, very big shuffle bowlers. Uh, and you can see it's right next to a, another wood rail of about the same era that it would have been uh, uh, next to, perhaps. And it's actually narrower than a, a typical pinball machine, but it's about perhaps a foot longer. So it can fit in the slot very well, and it'll stick out about another foot. Now the really interesting thing to me about this shuffle bowler is it uses regulation scoring, meaning spares are scored the, the correct regulation way and strikes are. Uh, spares would be a, a, a score of 10 plus your next uh, throw and strikes would be 10 plus your next two throws. Um, a lot of shuffle alleys uh, during those days, the EM type, they did not do regulation scoring. There probably were a few that did. This is one of the few that did uh, regulation scoring. Uh, the other ones would give you, I think, a straight 20 for a spare and a 30 for a strike, uh, not counted on the extra uh, throw that you have, but they just give you the points. So I like this because it was regulation scoring. And it has illuminated pins, and the pins are also illuminated on back glass, and as you roll your puck over them, they extinguish on both the back glass and on the, uh, on the pin board. Now you notice that it has this device here, which came with all these bolettes. This is, this is a homemade one to look uh, very, very similar to the one that came with the machines. Um, uh, the majority of these games are probably missing this. It's called a puck rake. And its purpose is if you do not slide the puck hard enough, it'll get stuck under here and you, you uh, cannot finish the game. So what this puck rake does is it goes underneath, it slides underneath this mechanism and pushes the puck to the back. Now in the back, there's a return lane that brings the puck back forward to the uh, player. Uh, this isn't the type of shuffle alley that has a rubber rebound strip in the back and it bounces back. This actually returns it more like a real bowling game. All right, let's take a close-up look inside the game. This is considered the uh, equivalent of a pinball play field. In order to get to the inside, you remove the, the alley. Now a couple things of interest here is this particular type of shuffle bowler, unlike most of the other shuffle type bowlers, has a uh, puck return lane right here built into the cabinet and the puck is presented to the player for his shots out here in this holder. And this is the puck right here. It's held in place by a solenoid right here. Then when you start the game it pulls the solenoid pin back and the puck will present itself. Now also the puck on a bowlette is an extra small type of puck. It's much much smaller and lighter than the typical shuffle alley uh, puck. It's even smaller than a, a shuffle board puck that you find nowadays. Another interesting thing when I was repairing this machine is the score motor has a has two discs to it. The top disc is what you're used to seeing where it activates the score motor switches. Then underneath this square disc right here is a stepper style disc. It has rivets on it and these are spring-loaded shoes just like a stepper circuit that as this rotates it makes contacts 
I'm not sure exactly what all these contacts do, to be honest with you. I understand the stepper motors uh, switches a lot better than I understand these rivet switches, but um, it's a very interesting uh, the hybrid type design. I hadn't run across it before. I'm, su I'm sure other games have it, but uh, I didn't really uh, notice it before on uh, any of my games. And a lot of the functions of the game are taken care of by these trough switches, and they're numbered. Number one is hidden underneath here. Number two, three, four, and five. And as the puck is returned, that is when all the activity happens on the bottom board. These switches tell the score motor to run. They tell the first shot relay or the second shot relay, the strike relay, the spare relay. They tell all that to work. So when you, when you, uh, when the puck activates the pin switches under here, all that that's doing is kicking off the pin relays on the uh, setup setup bank here. These are all the individual pin relays and combinations. And these activate as these switches are rolled over. And then as these switches are activated by a rolling puck coming down for the next shot, that activates the switches, uh, the other circuits in here, to do the scoring. And this is quite a formidable uh, early setup bank that they have here. So, as usual, if you have any kind of problems, the first place you look is the setup bank. There's a whole lot of soldering going on in these tabs, and they can be problematic sometimes. With old games, the solder tabs just fall off, and in this mass of solder joints, you've got to find the one that fell off and then try to figure out how to get a soldering iron in there to, to fix it. All right, let's take a look inside the back box of the bullet. Bowling machines live and die by their steppers to do the scoring, so this one certainly has all the steppers that you need for a, a shuffle bowler. Uh, it has the, uh, the frame unit for counting the 10 frames here, has the 1 to 9 unit here for counting the individual pins, and then it has the 10 to 300 to count the, 10, uh, the, the scores that come in increments of 10 to the 300. Uh, this is one of the uh, uh, arcade games that they put the transformer in the back box, so this ends up being a very heavy back box to carry around. Uh, there are some other machines that do that, I think Williams did some of that too. Otherwise, it's a pretty standard layout, pretty much like a pinball. Now let's see if I can illuminate this uh, interesting thing that I found when I was restoring this game. This is the uh, inside the back box down on the playfield side. This is the very back of the uh, lane where the sliding puck will fall off into the return trough. See this black uh, edging that they put on the rear of the uh, wood? That's actually a Gates uh, V-belt or a Gates fan belt. They cut off a straight section and they nailed it on the back as a protector so when the uh, puck would slide off the end of the wood, it would, it would turn the corner on this uh, rubber V-belt rather than on the wood itself and wear it down. Well, let's play a game on the bullet. You start a game by putting your coin in the coin slide. That's your start circuit, resets your score, and it presents the puck in the front of the machine. Now this is regulation scoring, so if I can get a spare or a strike, we can see how that works. But if you're familiar with regular bowling scoring, uh, this game follows that on spares and strikes. Okay, strike.
notice that after a spare, it waits for your first throw on the next frame, and then it finishes the scoring, but it keeps you in the same frame for your second shot. On the strike, it would wait for the next two throws or a whole frame before it does the scoring. Okay, and the game is completed. The score on this one was 128.